Check this thing out, guys. This thing's a beast, right? It's a, an 826 Toro. I don't know what that means. 26 inch width, maybe, eight horsepower. Beautiful big Briggs and Stratton engine on it. It's big. Uh, there's no electric start on this, so we're gonna have to, it's a manual pull. 1979, right, as far as I can see. That's my generation of stuff, right? That's like, that's like, we used to say things weren't made that good then, because they were made better, and they were getting cheapy, right, and like cheesier. It's like now, like a lot of my friends that I feel that I know, like we want that stuff because of what's out there today is crap. Let's dig into this thing. I love old stuff. And uh, so we have three of these, right? We have this one, which is the big one. And so I think, I guess if I do a, a, a pre-intro, right? Or however it shows up. When I cleaned them all out, I dug them out. And uh, so we've got the, the sort of like this is Big Daddy. We got the size underneath this, and then we got the little one, all Toro, so it's Toro time, Toro extravaganza. Let's dig into this thing. Let's see what we have, right? It pulls, and it feels, yeah, it's stout. So we wanna get, we wanna get a feel for what's going on here. It's got a pet cock down here on the fuel. Let's see if there's any Earl in it. Somebody put a fuel gefilter on it. There's some oil in it, it's gross. All right, it's enough to start it, to see if we can start it. Yeah, man, this is cool. I want this, right? It's missing some stuff. I think it's missing these handles here. We can always modify for that. There's a, a bunch of stuff hanging off. We'll see. So there's something missing here, which they tied back with this ratchet strap. So we're gonna have to take that off. Look, somebody put a switch here. And of course the usual nest and gook. Everything looks good in here. Bearing, everything else looks good. We're just gonna give it a little bit of cleaning. Not too crazy, and then let it dry. I'm not gonna to try to cut the grease off of it just to get the schmutz out. We also gotta take off the pulley cover over here, and then we'll clean this. There's just a couple of bolts here, one here. And we'll just get it clean as one over here, and that should come off. And again, just kind of like a, you know, it's not that dirty. Let's pull the plug and squirt some juice down in there. Oh, the plug was loose. You got all these adjustments on this carburetor. I love it. More down, ooh. ooh, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's just a little sooty. We'll give it a quick cleaning. I'll check the gap on it. And let's put some, here. We need to get some of this stuff on the throttle shaft, on the choke shaft. This is just my tranny fluid, a little bit of gas. That feels nice. What's this? Right? We have no idea what anything is. I have no idea, but you guys might. I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. Or how this is. It's held on by this thing down here. So let's get that off. Right? That way we can take a peek in there. There's all of these. Look at this switch here. That must be a kill. Uh-oh. That's nice. It's got some kind of throttle over here, right? Oh, it's going up, we're going up! Second floor, third third floor, lingerie. Yeah, this is gonna be nice. Certainly good enough for the ladies I date. Can't wait to we're gonna pull this thing over. I bet you this thing runs. Something else. All right, that can, oh, there's like rocks in there, wait. It's like goes with the rocks in my head, see? There's junk in there. All right, let's hang that down. There's some junk, just a little, nothing to see. It's got a little bit of junk in there. We gotta blow that out with something. Let's blow it out. And we'll pour some juice in that. And also some starting fluid. We'll get some juice up in here. Um, looks like one head bolt is sit, not sitting right. It must've been a bracket here or something. Um, let's pour some of our, this nice stuff in first, right? Up into the plug hole and pull it over. And just let it turn over a little bit. Then we got to check spark. Feels good. Feels beefy. You got to put some an S into that. All right, let me just go whiz this off on the whiz bang wheel, All right, and then. We'll see if we can check for spark. Maybe you guys can see it. 
All right, there's a key switch up here which is not connected, so I had a nice key switch at one point. Um, let me see, let me see if we can see spark. Yeah, I see spark, guys. There is sparkulators. Let's get some two smoke fuel down in here into the plug hole. I gapped it to 30, 28 thou. It was gapped to 30. Let's just put a little lubricant on that. Just tie it down in there. All right, you guys ready? Let me get a little starting fluid. We'll spritz some in there. A little bit of you. All right, I think she's gonna, I hope she doesn't go flying off the table. All right, there doesn't seem to be anything that should do that. I don't think it's in gear. I think it's in neutral. That's like neutral. Well, we'll find out. If it does, look out! We'll pop the back end up now. Let's see. This motor wants to run. Oof. Let me let it air out. Hold on. Okay, she's a runner. So I say, let's start taking it apart, right? Let's get the gas tank off. Let's get this cover off. Let's get the carburetor off. That way, we can go in there. We can make sure that it's all, the ignition system is clean. I don't know. I don't think it has points. Uh, 79, it, good chance electronic igniter. So that would be great. Just old enough to be super cool. Love this carburetor, so we want to treat it nice. Um, and if I need anything, I can call up my supplier and get it. So let's get that off right away. Yeah, this is the throttle. So, yeah, that's cool, right? Oh yeah, it's working. Let's get some lubricant on that. Let's put some of our chain wax. I'll get some of my chain wax on it before I have to buy more. These cables are nice because they they, uh, they allow you to get lubricant in them. We'll get that in there. That's why we'll let it walk its way in. Watch. And I have handles and stuff. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. Look at that. It's perfect. I'm going to get my juice on it. My juice. Let's see if we can pull this off. Somebody's done something to it. And it's missing some stuff, some just a few basic things. I figure worst case scenario is I can pickle one of the other machines as a donator, and then if I can get the part or make the part, or play the part, unlike YouTube, right, I'll do that. And we're, maybe we can get all of them going. And I'll have three cool really cool machines and I'll pick the ones that I want and see if I can sell the others just for who knows you know maybe you sell it for to a collector or somebody that likes it or maybe you sell it for a few bucks just to get a little bit of money back for your time yeah they're coming right off yeah this this is a little weird so how about we I think try to cross that up put some some juice on these not that that's going to do anything, but I don't feel right if I don't, right? Yeah, that screws in the way. Oh, I love these carburetors. These machines were made to be worked on by humans like me and you guys. Oh, look, I can't let's, we got to get this thing over on the bench. It's coming. Yeah, we can come to daddy. There we go. That's not bad. All right, let's fire up the bench camera and get over there. And I'm just going to give it a wash down up top, and we'll check all of the screws and everything, and we'll get it cleaned up. That gasket looks good too. A little bit of love juice on that valve, just for, for saying hi.
All right, so before we put the carb on, we're going to take this side cover off. So we've got to climb up here and get these bolts off. So unlike the cummy, right, you don't have to take head bolts off. It's these two here, and there's one down there, and I believe there's one on the other side. Is that? Yeah. All right, so let me get started on that, and we'll pull those off. And we'll also got to get the gas tank off, too, because we want to clean that. See, here's the pet cock. I spoke of earlier. Let me get some lubricant on all of that, and let me pull that off, and I'll be back over here too for these straps. So I had to go slow on these upper bolts. So a lot of lube, and then go a little bit, back up, go a little bit, back up, right? Because you'll you'll snap those little quarter twenty bolts. And I'll get you in closer because there's so many handles in there. Can we even get this off with all these things in the way? Yes. All right, that's what it looks like. So uh, let me pull the plug out, plugs out. Oh, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to set a camera up because there's so much stuff that's in the way, the camera won't focus. But it, it looks pretty good. I think if we just take off, gap looks a little big, I can tell you that on one end. We wanna wanna take that coil off, get in here and clean up in here. Let's get the gas tank off next. Okay, got this bolt loosened up good. I got them all nice and lick it up with, uh, Different, you know, spray lubes. Oh, little bug, die. Sorry. We gotta debug it, so that means they have to die. No, I'm not carrying them outside in the frozen tundra of the world. Yeah, this line is all hard. We'll put some fresh line on you as well. Now let's see if this moves. We'll put no C's. That should be good. Let's try that first. Now, sometimes you can slide them off and you loosen them up like that, but still keep the hardware, you know, captive. At least that one we were able to slide off. These one too. All right, good. Let's take a peek in here and get this tank cleaned up. I got to peek in here. I can't see. You can't see either. I can't see crap in there. All right, I got to look in there and see what's going on with that. I like metal tanks, they're sturdy, but they have problems, you know. This looks pretty good. All right, we're good over here. Wow, they used Allen's over here. All right, so now I'm gonna just blow a little bit with compressed air off camera, and, uh, cause there's a lot of junk up in here, and then we're gonna pull the coil off next. We'll clean the magneto, the magnet, um, we'll put a little lubricant spray lube into the balls on the starter. You gotta use a very light lubricant. I find chain wax, the chain lube, not the chain wax, but the chain lube works the best. Grease is no good in these balls. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but we'll show them to you in a minute. All right, I'm gonna take my buzz wheel with the Scotch-Brite pad, and we're gonna clean up that magnet. If it cleans up with the Scotch-Brite pad, great. If not, I'll go to the, you know, the carborundum, you know, abrasive disc, but let's start off with that. All right, so I got some lubricant on here. Hopefully you can see it. Um, you know, with everything in the way, I can barely see it. I'm really kind of close to poking my eyes out. And I'll take this off, we'll clean it on the wire wheel and we'll put it back in a minute. And also spray with a little solvent and just wipe everything down and give it a final blow. This wire disconnects from over here where the, manif uh, the electrical connection manifold is. Okay, so I cleaned up the coil, especially here in the areas where, where the ground is going to be. And the same thing with the standoff on the block itself. I want to get that all clean. But now the next thing I noticed, too, is that this actually, when I pulled it out of its boot, right, it unfolded. And it's, it's just like the old school style. So what you can also do, I'm going to hold on to that boot, is I removed... A newer style, which has got these little, this special clip on the end of it, that spring steel. And I removed that from another, I always keep them from like coils that are no good. Or you can take it off of an older coil. There we go. Okay. You see, kind of has the wire and it has this poker in it. So what we can do is strip a little bit of it off to get to that wire. We don't need much. And we're going to just pull this down, and you'll see. Okay. 
we'll, we'll actually we'll pull it up this way. We just need enough. And we'll slide this in. We got to make sure we're in the right direction. Get that in there like that. Okay. And then so the coil goes like that. And then we're going to crimp it. All right. Take my spark plug crimper tool. And that should be it. All right now, it's going to grip the plug properly. Whereas the other one didn't, right? It was just sloppy and even if you crimp it, right, it'll bend back. So it's not a good connection. And we'll put this back on. Anything just for a little bit of lubricant in it. Done. Okay. And if you want, because it is winter, right, we can take a little bit of, you know, it's wet operation. We'll take some white grease. Or... You can spray, what I like even better is a bit of chain wax in there and on the tip of the plug and it won't rot, okay? Because that's important too. Let's go put this on. All right, so I took the bolts and I just kind of you know, dip them in oil and just finger tight it so that it stays up. First, now we're gonna line up, now you can't see that, but we're gonna line up the magnet And then we'll get our 10,000 sits. I cleaned up the whole flywheel. There's no rust in the way. And I got the maggot real clean. Lower you down. All right, push down a little bit. Let's snug it. This because it's a laminate, you gotta crush it down. So I'll take my quarter-inch drive on my stubby and just cinch it just a little bit more. I need a new socket. That's good. And then this one. And I can't get my head in there. That's good. Okay. Now, let me get my tool back and we're done. Alright, and I'll show you how the routing for the wire goes. We want to make sure it stays away. Now this thing had the ability for an electric starter. I don't know which one it would have been, but that's kind of cool. We want to look into that in the future. So she just comes down through here and then there's this little tang and tab and that's it. Just make sure it it kind of scrapes a little bit. Scrape it a little bit, make sure it locks in. A few moments later if it is it feels like it's moving uh oh wait that didn't feel good all right let me put a little bigger wrench on that yeah she this is why i say you want to be really careful yeah she sounds horrible in there Let's see if we can you know wick some lubricant down into it see there it feels better Yeah, we don't want to break that. Now, sometimes heat makes things worse. All right, I'm going to work this angle for a little bit, guys. And we'll come back in, and we're going to put the cover on in a minute. Yeah. 20 minutes later. Because that's the thing, is, is that those bolts break, and then you, sometimes you're screwed, you can't do anything about it. You can try to get them out. A lot of times it's not worth it. On a motor like this, you know, I, I'd say probably, yeah, I like these motors. Yeah, well, I think we're going good now. Yeah, are right, we getting it? All right, now, if it's not too bad, what we'll do is we'll run a tap down in there if we can. Oh, we gotta get more juice down in there. And we can clean the bolt. And get good lubricant in there, maybe we can actually seed it. Hopefully it's the right one. It probably is, because it's the right color. I mean, it looks like it's original. But somebody might have lifted this up 
and got smart, got scared, but got smart. Somebody's been look, we're working on it. Well, the bolts, you know, now all that lubricant. See, I managed to get a lot of it down there. All right, I'm going to blow that out and see if I can put a tap in it. Get this baby cleaned up. All right, I'm going to run a 5 16 down here. I blew it out and I ran the bolt on the wire wheel and I even ran a die over it just to make sure because there's a problem here. I think this goes into the exhaust port a little bit because I saw when I blew down it felt like it came out from here. Now I don't know what that hole is. That could be a problem too. Maybe somebody was, I don't know, I don't know what that could possibly be. But she feels okay now. I'm wondering if it's like just bottoming out or if it was just all the gook. Alright, that's as, that's as far down as I can go. It feels like it's okay. Yeah. Alright. All right, we're just going to put some oil on the bolt. Regular, you know, nice thick oil. Fresh, clean. Shouldn't need anything. That bolt feels like it's a little long. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? That bolt is long. Alright, that's not right. Maybe somebody took off the bolts. And they got the wrong one on because that's that's not right. Like I would say, most likely they they put a bolt in that doesn't fit. And either there was a bracket here or they had this off. But let's see. It's gone down. Okay, that's it. That's tight. That's as tight. It feels like it is. That's tight now. Yeah, these are all tight now, and I think we're good. All right, we'll call that fixed for now, I guess, right? We'll see when we run it, but it feels correct. Now, we got one more thing. Okay. All right, so the last thing we're going to do, we're just going to put a little bit of chain wax on all of this. Because it will, it will protect everything. I'll do the coil too in a minute. I just want to show you this side. A little bit of burn off from the heat, but you know it's not going to rust. Remember, this is all wet weather service, so that's good. You don't need a lot. Um, now we're going to put a little bit of chain wax in here, but it, we're going to use that chain wax, chain lube, just a little bit in here in this hole. That feels nice. There is a little uh, sponge, I want to say, like a felt or something, and it's to keep it lubricated. Generally, oil, right? Automotive oil, motor oil, Earl, the Duke of Earl. Now, in here, we're going to use a little bit of this chain lube, right? Or oil, but something here. We can get right at the spring over here. Look at that. Right, cause you don't want, yeah, almost out. Oh. Let's get it in the hole. That should do it. Now we'll pull it through all the way to the end. That should work and we'll just give it a blow. Now that'll wax up. It'll protect the spring. It'll give some lubrication. We don't want anything to happen to it. Now, one last thing right, to make it a little easier to put the cover on. We're just going to, especially in the hole area, we're just going to oblong bell mouth this a little bit. Here's where the starter went. Same thing up here. It's actually pretty clean, like, it's not bad. Let's go put it on. Okay, and the last close-up before we put the cover on and the, the carburetor. All right, she's cleaning up nice. She's looking good. All right, I just want to pull it and see how it feels, and we'll check for spark. No, just to make sure I didn't screw nothing up. Oh, yeah, that's a much better spot.
this is aiming right at my hand for the adjustment, but I guess it's the uh, part of the idea is to maybe, I don't know, put heat over in that area. It's definitely not adjusted properly, so we need to figure out what why it's out of adjustment. It's not hitting idle, this, but it runs strong, right? It started right up. Okay, so now uh, this wire here, right, it's got to be grounded, so I connected this to ground. We should be able to kill it properly without having to choke it. I just want to do another test. So this arm here, which is part of the governor, was hitting this bracket. And so I just bent the bracket a little bit out of the way. I bolted it up in here, right? And I also moved this whole sheath forward. So now you can see that, because this was barely even moving. So that's idle, right? As per up here. And then when we move it, move the rod, let's see here, all right, it puts some pressure on it, trying to fight against the, the spring and the governor, and it should make the RPMs go up quite a bit. So let's, let's just do a quick test. Here we go. That's awesome. We got it. So will it run? And yes, it does. This thing's awesome. I am super psyched. Um, I will run a little bit more, guys. It's the end of the day here. It's, it's dark. It's late. It's freezing cold. I don't want to open the door anymore. Uh, but in the next video, we'll run it a little bit more, and I'll finish tuning it. It hasn't been run in a really long time. I've had it for a while. You can tell. It was run at some point in the recent past, but who knows how long that was. To bring it back to life properly, we got to get that oil out. I'll do that after I work on the rest of the machine because I'm going to be tossing this thing around. We need to get it really warm and hot with some fresh oil in it, tune it a little bit more, get everything going good, and uh, yeah, and then it'll be you know ready ready for well hopefully if the rest of the machine pans out. So anyway, I'll see you guys in a bit.